I don't know. Uh, it's both the beauty and the mystery of life that two seemingly unrelated events can come together in such a powerful way that nothing can ever be the same again. It's what happened four years ago when my story begins, which, like everybody's story, starts somewhere out in the universe. stood atop the Chicken Boy restaurant in downtown Los Angeles. I was a landmark. Some call me the Statue of Liberty of L.A. Now, whatever. I was 22 feet and 500 pounds of powerful permapress fiberglass. Well, anyway, you looked at it, I guess I was built. So it was something of a tragedy when the restaurant closed and I was removed. Some artists who believed in the idea of advertising icons as art took pity on me and paid to have me stored until... Yes, Jim, I'm standing in front of a gathering of people who believe a harmonic convergence will occur today. Now, they are describing the occurrence as a particularly powerful cosmic force that will take us all from being materialistic and self-oriented to more loving and more cooperative. According to some of the people here, today begins a period of cleansing and purification that will take us to the year 2012, when the planets will again become harmonized. The big event. They called it the Harmonic Convergence. It was 1988. The newspaper said the planets were lined up in a way that hadn't happened in hundreds of years. Astronomers and scientists argue that, in fact, there is no such thing as a true Harmonic Convergence. What do you think of that? Well, it's like from war to peace, from selfishness to love, from separation to unity, from Earth to the... Thank you. This is Steffi Gallagher, Griffith Park, live at 3. A lot of people laughed at the believers. Said they were just some played out hippies thrown together with some quirky new agers. But one thing I've learned is that people say a lot of things. Not all of it's kind or helpful or true. And to those who said that nothing of import happened at the moment when the planets converged, they haven't been where I've been. So, man, the search for the meaning of life takes on a whole new dimension when you suddenly find yourself part chicken, part boy, looking to survive in Southern California. I figured out that I'd been hatched from some crazy pop culture advertising concept. Yet, from the moment I came to life, I felt that I'd been brought here for a reason. The chicken half of me told me to go bury my head in the sand. The boy half of me told me to grab onto life for all it was worth. Question was, which came first, the chicken or the boy? <laughs> well, anyway, whatever the forces created me sure sent me to the right place. Some parts of LA seemed to fit right in. But I was soon to find out there were plenty of bad eggs out there who didn't like anyone who might look a little different. Then that's getting ahead of my story. La La Land, huh? Boy, it sticks in my craw when I think how alone I felt those first few days. Hollywood. Sure is a hard town to crack. But I was on a mission. A date with destiny, if you will. I had to figure out how to fit in, in the pecking order known as life in American society. Seems that most people have to scramble to make it to the top, while some poor souls are destined to never even break out of their shells. Fortunately, I came to life already knowing certain things, like food, clothing, and shelter are essential, that you can't make it without money, and that you should never, ever make eye contact in certain neighborhoods. Well, I tried on a series of jobs that, for one reason or another, just didn't work out. Chicken on a stick. Well, that was my first job, and 
Old Skippy, the manager, he just couldn't quite get it. Couldn't quite figure out why the uniform just didn't fit. Besides, I was morally and philosophically opposed to the food they served there. I mean, pup in a cup? Give me a break, baby. Then there was my stripogram job. I'd suffice it to say I didn't like being treated like a piece of meat. Besides, the tips were chicken feed. Selling door to door had somewhat disastrous consequences. It was slowly beginning to dawn on me that I may not be able to fit in. And that's when I saw her, and she saw me. I'm telling you now, there's nothing that can prepare you for what happens when that feeling first comes over you. I know now that it's love. I only knew then that I had to be with her. I wanted it to be forever. Pardon me, but I couldn't help but noticing you've taken this look so much farther. I kind of like it. What's your name? Chicken Boy. Chick Boy? Okay. Nice to meet you. I'm Janie Lou Hofsetter. And you know, I'd really like to get to know you a lot better, if you don't mind. Uh -huh, uh -huh, yeah. Well, we headed for the diner on the corner where, for the first time, Janie and I experienced prejudice against interspecies dating. I ordered a, what was fast becoming my usual, a bowl of moldy grain cereal, chased down with a double shot of grain alcohol. I love that stuff. Janie and I really hit it off. I had no idea life could be so good. Now, this was one chicken boy who was headed into uncharted territory. Yeah, a little liquid courage never hurt anyone. Janie Lou suggested bowling, a sport it seemed I was naturally good at. like me, misfits, artists, poets, sheet metal fabricators and the like. suggested we go to her place. I couldn't wait. Oops. Look out now. Oh, look out. There we were, just sitting around having a cup of herbal tea when I spotted an old accordion. I picked it up, and when I strapped that thing on, the strangest feeling came over me. I didn't worry anymore about what it looked like or where it came from. My, my fingers uh, just knew what to do, and before I knew it, my beak did too. The pain, the troubles, the frustrations, all the feelings I'd known in my few short days of life came pouring out of me like poop from a goose. Just yesterday, I walked alone, complete unknown, no telephone to call my friend. You came along and held my hand Now I understand just who I am And now my heart sings Oh, Janie Lou You're the air beneath my wings I love you, Mary. You're the greatest. Oh, 
hold on, hold, hold it, CB. You can't do this. It wouldn't be right. After all, you're chicken boy. You're not even rooster boy. Romantically speaking, you could lay an egg. Chick, wait. Don't go. I, I gotta go, Jenny. I can't fall in love with you. I don't know who or what I am. But that doesn't seem to stop any of us. Oh, for your sake, Jenny, I'm going. Here, take this. Keep it. Just think of me when you play it. Goodbye, Jenny Lou Hofstetter. I didn't know where I was going or what I would do. I just knew I had to get as far away from Janie as I could. to pay big money for you. Ooh, he is a freaky guy. In L.A., people are always looking for freaks. What do you say? You want to freak out together? Hey, girl, who's freaking who? <laughs> I'm not a freak. Do you hear me? I'm not a freak. Freak, and uh, I'm gonna do the only thing a self respecting freak can do. Step right up, folks. Here it is the home of Chicken Boy, alive on the inside. You don't want to miss this. See, the ornithopic marvel of the ages. This unique creature is actually half man and half chicken. It's on display today for just 99 cents, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, just 99 hundredths of a dollar. You don't want to miss this. We've turned this actual tragedy of nature into an educational entertainment display. Off you folks, see Chicken Boy alive on the inside. Step right up, folks, here it is. The home of Chicken Boy alive on the inside. You don't want to miss this scene. The owner thought that Marvel the Whenever my biographers write about me, they always single out this era as the lowest point in my life. <laughs> Thank the Lord, it didn't last long. Oh. Well, it can't be. Janie. Once we'd found each other, I realized what I lost. I wasn't letting her go. Janie and me, we had a lot of talking to do. I found out from Janie that her father was a big Hollywood agent, that he was ready to help me. Janie had convinced him that with my singing ability, I was destined to be a star. That night I moved in with Janie, and I'm happy to tell you that everything worked out for us, if you know what I mean. Oh, Lordy, after our first time together, my crowing nearly woke up the neighbors. Now, I know why they say cock-a-doodle-doo. But first, there's a lot of work to be done. If I was gonna be a star, I knew it'd take everything I had to give. I never said it'd be easy, Lordy. Now, my 
my dancing coach thought I had plenty of pizzazz in my lower half. Trouble was, I was somewhat limited in the sexy sneer department. Okay, now, instead of Kevin Costner and Dances with Wolves, we thought we'd do Jack Nicholson and Dances with Chickens. <laughs> uh, I got my first gig at a club in Columbus, Ohio, following a group of struggling comics. How, my Chickawa brother? Uh, how? And how? Look, a white man. We will call him... We'll call him Dances with Chickens. Bach, Bach, frickin' Bach. Go Lakers. Hey, peace, we love you. Good night. All right, that was Lapsy Muchacho, everybody. Yeah. Now, your wait staff has been taking care of you this evening, so leave something green on the table for them. And beside that, leave some money. Yeah! And now, our next performer this evening is a musical talent, brand new from LA, Chick Boyd. My first time on stage, I was so scared you could have knocked me over with a feather. But I sang like I never sang before. And before I knew it, I had everybody on their feet. The place went wild. All right, listen up, baby, I want to sing to you. Well, don't you call me a turkey, baby, cause I'm not that kind of foul. And honey, don't mistake me for a six-foot holy owl. Well, And you can bet your beat that I ain't no freak and there's no woodpecker here Well, there's no woodpecker here No, there's no woodpecker here I'm not a hawk or a dove, I'm just in love well, there's no woodpecker here mm. Hey, chicory, eat your heart out Satisfy my needs Well, I'm sort of a bird And I'm sort of a guy As you can see, my dear But you can bet your beak When you take a beat There's no woodpecker here Well, there's no woodpecker here Oh, yeah There's no woodpecker here I'm not a hawk or a dove I'm just in love And there's no woodpecker here Some people say that fate is the fool's word for chance. Well, as fate would have it, I became a sensation. I was not only accepted for who and what I am, I was and am loved by all. And the strangest thing about it is I didn't have to lie or cheat or step on anybody else on my way to the top. No, I just had to be myself, an accordion playing, love song singing, chicken-headed boy. And when I first came to life like everybody, I began to search for the perfect world. Well, I haven't found the perfect world yet, but I do know that it'll only be possible if we can accept each other for whatever it is we are. I, I have a favorite saying, it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. I think that just about sums up my life so far. And so far, life is good. And if a chicken could smile, I would. Chicken boy, too tall to live, too weird to die. It's 
Chicken boy, heaven will smile on, 